Welcome to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we'll be looking at a brake barrel from Milbro that's aimed at hunters looking for a rifle on a budget. So then, let's see what this 150 pounds Milbro Tracker Hunter can do in a Big Dan's Mega Test. As with all Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews, we always start with the features of the rifle. Towards the rear end of the Tracker Hunter you get a very nicely formed ventilated butt pad and also a nicely raised cheek piece on the rear to help you get the correct eye to scope alignment hopefully every time. Towards the middle section of the rifle you also get a nice amount of checkering on the grip and you also get a two stage trigger unit as standard. Towards the action you've also got an automatic and resettable safety which as you may know if you've been watching this channel I'm a huge fan of and you also have an anti-creep block on top of the action here on the mounted on the dovetail which is designed to stop a scope from creeping during the recoil cycle. Also a very very nice feature in my opinion. As we move towards the nose end of the rifle I'm sure the more eagle eyed viewer would have noticed during the start of the introduction of this video that the Tracker Hunter's barrel is in fact fully threaded and the Tracker Hunter does come with its own silencer in with the package. That's the features of the rifle covered. We'll now move on to handling and discuss the automatic safety and just how hard the rifle is to cock. Then we'll move on to power, then accuracy and overall verdict. So then, moving on. As we mentioned earlier, the Milbro Tracker Hunter is a brake barrel rifle. To cock the rifle you simply give the barrel a tap, lock it into its resting position here, load a pellet directly into the breech like so, bring the barrel back up and you would normally be ready to go but the Tracker Hunter as mentioned earlier comes with an automatic safety which is disengaged by simply cocking this small hammer back like so. You know when you're ready to fire when you see the red strip above the hammer. What I like about this safety is that you can be easily disengaged or re-engaged by flicking the hammer directly upwards. Well that's the basics of this rifle covered. We know how the rifle's loaded and cocked and we know how the automatic safety engages and disengages. Next up we have the fun part of the review and this is where we test the rifle's accuracy. We have six different pellets on trial. The Remington Tyrant Hammer dome pellets, the Remington Thunder Sniper Lights, the Diana Magnums, the JSB Exact Diablos, Remington Thunder Barracudas, and the SMK black pellets. The target will be set up 25 yards away using our usual range with me taking aim here and with the target being over by the wood pile over there. We'll test all six pellets, see which ones it likes the best and we'll come to a verdict and then test that pellet through the chronograph and see exactly what power the Tracker Hunter is putting out. So then, let's crack on with it. First up, the Remington Tyrant Hammer. Next up, the Remington Thunder Sniper Light. SMK black pellets. Fourth on the list, Diana Magnum. Number five on our list, the Remington Thunder Barracuda. Last but not least, the JSB Exact Diablo. Well, 
Well here we have the results of the accuracy test. The two best pellets on test were the JSB Exacts, as I'm sure we probably predicted, and the Remington Thunder Barracuda, which I personally didn't predict, as spring guns don't tend to like heavier pellets. As you may have seen, the other four tins did their absolute best not to group with the Tracker Hunter, but it seems like the Barracudas and JSBs definitely did their magic. The main cluster for the Barracudas was pretty impressive, with only one flyer with a recoil caught me off guard. And the JSBs, on the other hand, also put out a pretty stellar five pence group, with another pellet sorry, flying off to the right once again, probably down to user error. Big Dan isn't perfect. But how does the Tracker Hunter actually feel to shoot? Well, as mentioned earlier, the rifle is actually much lighter than it looks, so keeping on target was surprisingly easy. The trigger does seem to be set up for someone with a preference for heavier triggers, however. The overall feel of the trigger isn't bad, though, and you can definitely feel the second stage engaging, helping you to predict when the shot will break. If I had to pick a negative for the trigger, it would definitely be the pattern that Milbro have put upon the trigger blade itself, which to me feels slightly uncomfortable. But I'm sure some shooters out there will definitely like the way that the pattern feels, maybe thinking it give them more grip or something like that. Again, as mentioned, I'd rather the trigger blade itself just be smooth, but you can't win them all. But how's the recoil? Well, this definitely isn't a kiddies introductory rifle, to be fair, that's for sure. The Tracker Hunter definitely has a bit of kick to it. On the plus side, though, the lock time does feel pretty fast, and with the right discipline you can get some fantastic groups with it. And it definitely spits pellets out with some gusto, I can tell you that, you can feel that. But exactly how much gusto, I wonder? Well, let's head on over to the power test and find out. So then, 10 shots through the chronograph later, and what are the results? Let's take a look. Through the 10 shots, we had a maximum spread of only 9 feet per second and a standard deviation per shot of 3.29 feet per second. As I'm sure many air gunners here will be thinking, that's bloody good, especially for a budget rifle. So we know that the consistency, oh yes, and here's we're putting out a maximum of 11.58 feet pound. So I'd imagine that's where that slight more kick is coming from. It could also be because I was testing the little XS19 from SMK earlier and that does have a particularly smooth shot cycle, but That'll be the next review coming up. So now we know that the power and consistency is absolutely top notch. And the accuracy, while slightly pellet fussy, is also top notch. But there was one thing that's bugging me, and that's that silencer. As many of us will know, many budget brake barrel rifles don't come with silencers, and when they do, they don't actually seem to do anything, and it's more an aesthetic. Um, accessory than an actual purposeful accessory. So let's do a test. Let's take two shots, one shot with the silencer off and see what you think, and then another with the silencer on and see what the results are. Let's see if that big blob on the end actually has a purpose. So here's the silencer test now. We'll have one shot here with the silencer on, which hopefully you can see in the screen. I'll just be quiet now, just have a go and see what you think. Now we'll take the silencer off, simply unscrew. Load another pellet. As you can see here, there's the threaded barrel. There's no trickery on here at all. That's the silencer removed. And let's have another listen. Personally, although it may not come out too well on the video, I think that that made a hell of a difference. Let me just try it one more time. So we'll go, this time we'll go silencer off, first shot. Again, I do apologise if this isn't coming out too well on the video. I'll try again just to be absolutely certain, see if you can hear it. So here's silencer off. Plonk the silencer back on. Here we 
we go. Silence are on. And let's try it again. I think that is a definite result, I think, with the silencer on compared to the silencer off. To my ears, at least, that does definitely sound a heck of a lot quieter. So I'll say kudos to Milbro. I think they have done a good job when it comes to the deadening effect on the silencer that comes with the gun. Another feature that I'm sure hunters will most definitely appreciate. So with that done, and all bases covered, let's move on to the final verdict. So then, the final verdict. What do I think of the Milbro Tracker Hunter, and what are its pros and cons? Well, pros will start off with what us shallow people tend to like. I think it's a very pretty looking rifle. It looks a little bit different compared to the normal sea of semi-drab budget brake barrel rifles in that you've got a nice bit of checkering on the grip. And just the overall finish of the rifle is pretty much superb. The bluing, although it may look a little bit dirty now it's had my greasy little fingers all over it, is extremely deep and even the finish around the automatic safety is absolutely spot on. I like the overall length of the rifle as well as although it's a bit on the huge side and it stops teenagers or youngsters from using it, it does give it a certain special look and appeal. The silencer is also a very very nice add-on that does actually do as it is intended to do and it genuinely does lower the muzzle report on the Tracker Hunter. I'll put it this way, it definitely does a better job of silencing the rifle than BSA's silencer that was on the Super 10 on the last episode. Anyways, moving on. The rifle is nice and easy to cock. It is a full powered gun, but it is very nice and easy to use, especially with the silencer on the end of the barrel. With the silencer taken off, it can be a little bit more difficult, obviously, because you've got a lot less barrel length. With the silencer gone, the barrel juts out about here. But then that's pretty much self-explanatory. Besides, there's no real reason to take the silencer off other than packing it away anyway. But yeah, the rifle is well made. The trigger, although it is a bit stiff, you can definitely feel the second stage engaging so it does make it a little bit more predictable in that regard and as mentioned you are getting a fair bit of power for your money. Here we have the chrono results again, it's putting out a maximum of 11.58 feet pounds using the JSB Exact Diablo pellets and consistency is absolutely astonishing with only a standard deviation of 3.29 feet per second per shot with a maximum spread of 9 feet per second. That is top notch, no matter how much money you're paying for a rifle, that is absolutely fantastic. Accuracy is also, it's attainable, but we'll move on to that in a minute when we get to the neutral section. Accuracy is spot on when you're doing your job. I've also put the wrong pellets here, wrong way around, that should be like that. As we mentioned, Big Dan is not perfect. Uh, the group here with the JSBs is absolutely spot on. You've got one flyer there, which is partially my fault, and with the Remington Barracudas, We've got a flyer just up here, which once again I'll blame on myself. Um, but yeah, overall the positives are, it's beautiful to look at, it performs the way it should, the consistency is absolutely through the roof, and the power and accuracy is also pretty much all you could ever want when it comes to a spring gun. Well, sort of. And features, you've also got that automatic safety on there, which is resettable. As you can see, it's in the fire position now, the rifle is empty though, but just to be extra safe, I'll show you just how easy it is to reset once more. There you go, done. <coughs> It's a very, very well finished, well thought out, and very nicely performing and accurate rifle. But, I do have to mention some niggles. As with all my reviews, as I said, my policy is going to be, no matter how good the rifle is, I will always find a negative, as nothing is perfect. Niggles. So, we have the trigger, which, as I said, it is at least predictable. You can feel when the second stage is kicking in. It is slightly slightly heavier and has a slightly longer pull compared to what I'm used to. Again, each shooter is different. I'm sure it's probably done from a safety standpoint as it is a, an introductory level, hun level hunter rifle. So it will be set heavier so as there's less accidents and mistakes. Um, I'm not, not a huge fan of it personally, but again there are people out there as I've said that like it and I'm also not a huge fan of the pattern that's on the trigger blade itself. That to me should have been kept completely smooth. Just no pattern at all, just keep it as a smooth trigger blade. But Again, it does do its job. The other thing, again, this isn't really a, a negative, as it is a higher performing, high powered rifle, but the recoil may catch some off guard. There is definitely a bit of kick to this gun. Um, 
Again, it could be because I've been shooting the XS19, which is a completely smooth little rifle, pretty much straight out of the box. But this does kick a hell of a lot. Again, when you do your job, you can keep it on target. Again, this is 25 yards unrested but from a seated position. Um, but to people new to the sport, it may catch them slightly off guard, and it's definitely worth mentioning. Overall, though, I do think that it's a tremendous looking rifle with, as mentioned, the features and performance that you ideally definitely want. And tuners will get the most out of that trigger and they will also get a lot more work and performance out of the action once it's been refined down. Some of the things those guys can do out there is absolutely amazing and I can see this being a massive favourite with the tuners out there in the future. So that's the Milbro Tracker Hunter. Overall, a lovely, lovely gun in my opinion. Just watch out for the recoil and Personally, if I could not recommend it to anybody, it would be juniors and youngsters to the sport as it may be a bit too long, although not heavy at all, it may be a bit too long for them. I think with this rifle you can definitely say you're getting a lot of rifle for the money. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Next episode we will be testing the SMK XS19, another budget at level rifle. Um, after that I also have the Artemis M16 PCP, which I plan on testing. Again, another yuck, PCP, but... We have to review everything we can so as you can hopefully make the right idea and right decision when it comes to purchasing your next rifle. Thanks for watching, take care and we'll see you next time.